All right. It has become abundantly clear that the people who run this country have no interest in keeping us alive, nor are they willing to provide the support we need to keep ourselves alive. So the Working Family Party took matters into their own hands and created a comprehensive plan that centers workers instead of uh, corporations. Today we have with us the Working Family Party's National Director of Strategy and Partnerships to talk about the Working Family Party plans and how we can make them a reality. Nalini Stamp serves as the National Director of uh, Strategy and Partnerships at the WFP for over a decade. She has worked to build a multiracial, economically just society through the progressive electoral campaigns nationwide and abroad. She speaks on dozens of leading progressive panels and you need to see her. And we're happy to have her right here with us today. Nalini, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, let's talk about, well, first, if people, do, we have a kind of an international audience, by the way, if you're watching from anywhere, you can put questions, please label them in the Facebook stream underneath the YouTube video, and we'll hopefully get back to you on that as well. And you can put questions in our Twitch stream, which you always do. Can you talk about uh, the, what the Working Family Party is, just so that people who are unfamiliar will be all on the same page? What's the role it plays in our politics? Absolutely. Um, you know, Working Families Party is a political home um, for people to come together and elect the best candidates on the ballot. Um, we find, recruit, and train candidates up and down the ballot, especially in state, local, and cities. Um, we have we both have run our own candidates, but we understand that we live in the two-party system in the United States, um, which we can have a whole discussion about that, the merits of that. Um, but, you know, we've also elected our own candidates like Kendra Books who is on the Philadelphia City Council as a Working Families Party member of the City Council. So, yeah. Yeah, well, there's so much to talk about, including Cuomo, <laughs> like, who's a hero now, who was so, oh, he was all up and working, no good. He hates us. <laughs> I'm sure he does. And, you know, that's good to be hated by people who aren't agreeing with the politics that would support working families, right? That's the point totally. of it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. If he becomes the president of the blue states of America... Ooh. I, think, <laughs> I know. Goodness gracious. Okay. While well, he's so, cutting Medicaid, right? Like both. <laughs> yeah. Not helpful. Like, oh, he's our hero. And I'm going to cut Medicaid in the middle of the pandemic. But in New York, the Working Families Party, you can vote for your candidate on the Working Family Party's line, which basically yep. says, yeah, I'm voting for you, Cuomo, but I really want you to be as progressive, <laughs> labor friendly, um, environmentally friendly as possible. It's showing mm -hmm. that your Cuomo vote isn't like, oh, I vote for Cuomo to let, you know, real estate have its way or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. So it's, it's really great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. The um, bell lines in New York, Connecticut, South Carolina. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. And you're growing. And we're growing. We've, uh, we're across the country. We're in states like um, Georgia, um, oh. Mexico, Colorado. Uh, Georgia right now is, I used to live there. <laughs> so, good show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, really, for really, really. Wish Casey Abrams didn't get the election stolen from her because it would be totally different right now. <laughs> yeah. Totally different. <laughs> Yes, I have nothing to add to that comment. Um, uh, can you talk about the comprehensive demands that the Working Families Party made to respond to the coronavirus? What's the big picture? Absolutely. I mean, the big picture is we need to take care of our communities and we uh, believe that we need to actually come from a place of care. Um, there are folks who are struggling to pay their rent because they've been laid off. I, what, what did we have? Three, mi three million new people last week, it said. Um, filed for unemployment, so we're almost 30 million people. Oh, Nalini, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but can you move a little bit to your left? There you go. Yes. There you go. Okay, sorry. Uh, I don't want you to be weirdly covered by our logo, and I can't move it, so it's... Oh, okay, no worries, no worries, no worries. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, totally so, I'm sorry, say that again. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, we centered our demands around um, care, um, taking care of people, and so not just... We absolutely believe that healthcare workers... And frontline workers need, you know, PPE need to be taken care of. But we also need to take care of our communities. We need to take care of people who have are un unemployed because of quarantine. We need to take care of people who need to take care of their loved ones under quarantine. We need to take care of of just people. So we, you know, we demanded everything from, you know, making sure that people are able to don't have to pay rent and not. Like it's like, you know, furloughed, but just don't pay it until this is over. Um, making sure that people 
you know, making a mortgage freeze, um, getting people universal, universal basic income, but not just one check, but making sure people are covered. One check that you didn't even get, honestly. Right. Just say yeah. me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's no way. So or like, Donald Trump said he was, you know, he wasn't going to sign it and then decided to sign it, which is propaganda. Um, absolute propaganda. So, you know, our fundamental. I feel like it's a deal with the devil. He signed it. And then I feel like somewhere in the small print is like, if you cash this, you're yeah. my bitch. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There was a, a really good image that somebody put together out there that was basically his um, signature on over um, uh, caskets. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what you're. That's 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 what he's doing. Nice. But yeah, I mean, you know, our our demands are um, centered around caring for people, centered around not bailing out corporations, but actually, ha if we have the resources to not bail out, but take care of our people and our communities, because then we can strive. And also the necessities, right? We should have testing everywhere. This is kind of ridiculous that even in a place like New York, where we've had like nine eleven happen, basically, like. 10 times over we can't even get tests here and we are highly tested compared to the rest of the country so you know all of the basic necessities that we need to respond to the crisis ppe taking care of, of frontline workers like nurses thank you to all the nurses that are out there and frontline workers i always i mean tears come to my eyes when i think of you all but also just taking care of our community so making sure that we have things like universal basic income until people can be covered making sure people don't have to worry about their paycheck or putting food on their table Nalini, uh, we people have been so used to neoliberal talking points coming at them from every corner of the globe that the only question they ever come up with is, oh, well, how are we going to pay for that? How We can't give everybody a dollar. What are we going to do? We already sent one check. How are we going to keep sending check after check after check? But there, you're saying there is a way to do this. Can you break down how? There are multiple ways to do this. Um, you know, we could always, uh, you know, uh, we could stop bailing out the airline industry that no one's using. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We also could like, you know, uh, demilitarize and, 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 and take some of those resources that we spend on endless wars and reroute them to taking care of our country. So that's, you know, we can also tax the rich. <laughs> we can tax the wealthy, wealthiest, you know, um, like the, the 1% in this country has seen their taxes go down for a long time and we could just, Bring it even back to where it was. I read ago. that over the last month, the one percent is actually ten percent richer than they were at the start of the coronavirus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they know how to make money, so all of that money could have just been rerouted. So there are ways. I mean, states can be, you know, because there are state governments, they can be doing emergency um, tax you know, taxing of, of folks. People can actually put in policies to generate the revenue, but also we are one of the richest countries in the world and it's not okay <clears throat> excuse me it's not okay that we have members of congress who are like like alexandria ocasio cortez who are literally doing mutual aid we're the richest country in the world our members of congress should be i mean it's, it's great that she's doing this but she should be out there legislating so that we can find solutions and not having to actually deliver people food that is ridiculous that is yes. absolutely ridiculous we are the richest country in the world we always talk about you know, in our um, crazy way of internationalism, we always blame someone else, but you have countries out there with a billion people and they do not have the level of deaths that we have. This is absolutely ridiculous. And so there are a thousand ways, I could literally spend the next hour, you know, to, you know, all the ways, listing all the ways that we could pay for this. We could literally end our wars. We could tax the wealthiest tomorrow. We can do so much. And unfortunately, and we are, again, the, one of the richest countries in the world, but unfortunately what we're doing is we're bailing out corporations. Um, we are um, just, you know, allowing state legislators to open because they want, and, and we're allowing this fascist uprising that's happening with people literally bringing guns to the cops and saying they want our government open. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's Super ridiculous. You just gave me a great idea. We should make a video that we can go viral called how to pay for it. And the yeah. it can be anything we want. And then it we can, can be anything. where to get the cash. Well, there's so much. <laughs> so much. Nelly, have you seen people, you know, uh, an increase in interest an increase in people coming to the Working Families Party since the, the virus has has struck? Absolutely. I mean, we've seen people who have, well, one who just 
we've seen a lot of people and polling even shows that there's a shift that's happening happening politically in this moment um as you know there are older people for the first time that are like mm, those those conservatives maybe not <laughs> um <laughs> those conservatives the ones right. i've been voting with for years right 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 <laughs> maybe not maybe oh right they want to make me die because i'm one of the vulnerable communities okay Nope. But, you know, we're seeing such a shift and so many people have been coming to volunteer for the Working Families Party. Um, we actually, um, with, there's this thing called the colorcode.org, which I helped um, and a, a bunch of people have, have thrown down on and we identified people, but like, we're just saying, okay, are you green? Are you good? Are you, you know, are you in quarantine? Like, do you need supplies? And we had so many people, we had like hundreds of people come to us and be like, here's where I identify. I want to help with mutual aid and just you know, rerouted those folks to mutual, local mutual aid groups and making and also allowing them to see who's near them if they're in need. And so we've had a lot of people just on the basics of mutual aid. We've had a lot of people who are like, oh, let's let's uh, let's do something about this election. Um, and you know what? Also, I know that a lot of people out there are are scared and hurt and um, don't know what to do as well. And so, you know, folks can always, always, always go to workingfamilies.org or find us on, on Facebook and, and Twitter and all, all, all the things, all the socials <laughs> um, to, to work on state legislator elections, to, to find and recruit more candidates to run for office. We still have a long way to go in this election season, election year, and we need to get rid of all the bad actors up and down the ballot. Oh, that's so true. Well, we got a lot of work to do on that. Can you talk about how the platform of the working family parties, like how, how you're bringing that to the people who are in office now so that they can see that, you know, a lot of us want this. Yeah. So we, you know, we have a lot of candidates or in electeds, like, and I want to just shout out Eileen, um, new, who's like an amazing legislator and assemblywoman here in New York, also represents Chinatown and, and districts that are getting high levels of like anti-Asian sentiment right now. Um, because we have the, you know, the president of the United States calling it the China virus. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, so I just want to shout out Yuvin. So we talk to folks and we get them on phone calls and try to carry the platform, but we also ask them, we ask our elected officials, we have elected officials that identify with our wolf pack <laughs> and yes. are, in, you know, and are in us. And we ask them what's going on. How can we be helping? And I actually think, you know, it, what's been really beautiful is that now more than ever, we have, we are working with our electeds to, to hand in hand, coming up with solutions to this crisis. So in Philadelphia, the work that Kendra Brooks is doing on the Philadelphia City Council is amazing. And we're just supporting her every step of the way. She's calling for rent freezes. She's calling for the things that we need and the platform, and we're doing it in tandem. So it's really been lovely to just get on phone calls with these folks, figure out how for those who are up for election to help them and think about how we do that in a time where like I'm used to knocking on doors and I don't know what to do now, but it's also making sure that we're in tandem politically. And it's how can really people get involved if they're, uh, you know, new to the Working Families Party or retired or just vote on the line? How can they get involved in, in this? Absolutely. Yeah, uh, folks can text HOME um, to 738-674. Um, again, HOME to 738-674. Um, that signs you up to and then we'll ask you a couple questions we'll ask folks if they want to be a member of the party i really really hope that everyone uh our folks out there become members if you want to actually build a political home for working people um yeah and you can also Does it go mean that you leave the, your democratic like can you still vote in the primary if you absolutely if you're a member of the working families party i mean you can in places like new york and connecticut register as a working families uh registrant you can also vote on our ballot line in those places, but you can just become a member and you don't have to change your voter registration if you don't want to. Good. I want to make sure that I can go in there and pick who I want. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so just text home, home and and you, you can join as a do saying member, but you don't have to change your registration. <laughs> Nalini, you said in your video that when you took to Twitter about um, the death of your uncle, that the people in charge right now have blood on their hands. And I agreed with you 100%. They're basically murdering people through neglect, which is still murder. If you yep. neglected a kid until it was dead, that would be murder. Yep. Um, it seems that either they don't care about the blood on their hands or they're purposely just letting people die because it suits them. 
it betters their party. They weren't going to win the black vote anyway. They weren't going to win. You know what I mean? How do we organize around a party that is so dehumanizing, you know, how to, to win that fight? Mm -hmm. Well, I think part of well, one of the things that I think is really important is we have to name names. And that was part of why I took to Twitter in a, in a fit of rage is because if That's we are actually way. not telling our stories, hmm. if we're not, you know, I mean, this happened after Vietnam. Like the thing about the anti-war movement then was that you saw all the, the, the journalists were always, you know, it was on TV all the time, all the bodies that were coming back. So people were outraged. The right wing kind of took note and never did that again, never allowed that to happen again, only when it suits them. So yes, we'll read all the names. And listen, I was in Manhattan on September 11th. It was my third day of high school. Um, I grew up in Staten Island. We lost a lot of people. We lost the most people per capita in the entire city, in the five boroughs. We'll read those names every year. But when have we read all the people who have been lost to the Iraq and Afghanistan wars? When did we read, do, have we read every name that is was lost in Hurricane Maria of the island of Puerto Rico, where my family's from? Like, no, because it doesn't suit these folks. And so I think that the way that we have to do it is we have to name names. So if you're no, out there, I would say- goes out and like, uh, you know, covers to millions of people, broadcasts activities to millions of people. So maybe you and I should get together and have a name reading on yes. those days. I'll bring the camera. Yes, and, and the live thing, and you bring us somebody to read. You would be good, yeah. and we'll just go in front of the thing and read them. I mean, exactly. So put it. memorials up. I would just say, you know, for folks who are out there, if you can, some way to memorialize so that we're actually visually see it, because we can't. We can't say goodbye. My mother couldn't say goodbye to a person that meant the world to her, um, because she, uh, you know, she couldn't. She couldn't, yeah. she missed the phone call. And so oh, if, if, no. if you're out there, if you're out there, you know, find a way to memorialize folks. Like I bought, I just like bought paint, got it delivered. And I'm just going to figure out how to paint something outside and just like drop a thing with people's names on it. Right. Like out of my I video. I think the beauty of what you did with your video was you showed the emotional and human impact of one death. We have, or two, we have 70,000 deaths and the seven each person is affecting countless people so we have mm -hmm. a whole nation that is yep. in grief and extreme mourning absolutely i you know if we have to and we have to and we have to i think that people think that grieving is not a radical act or mourning and i actually would push back on that like these are radical acts and it might seem like a place, it might seem like a place of hopelessness, but it's 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 radical to name people's names. It is radical to be enraged because you're mourning and you're grieving. These are actually progressive radical acts to do. And so, if you're out there, and it, you know, whatever way that you can memorialize that other people can see, whether it's through your window, whether it's putting folks make a photos little video of street, your own of your own. a little video, whatever it is, like. I think, you know, I would just challenge folks to, to, to take, take the airwaves and, and, and name the names. It's, it's humanizing uh, when, when we're working against the forces of dehumanization. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. How, uh, tell again, how, where people can go to get involved. I've got, you can text home H O M E to seven, three, eight, six, seven, four again, seven, three, eight, six, seven, four. Uh, other ways folks can get involved in Working Families Party? Yeah, um, you can uh, go to our website, workingfamilies.org, um, or find us, Working Families Party, on Twitter, on Facebook. We have people who are always answering messages or all of that stuff. And yeah, and, and uh, we're hoping to, to do some naming of names and some other things coming soon. So I'm Maybe really excited. Yeah, Thank you all at Act TV because I love you all. About that. This has been great to have you on. Nalini Stamp, um, she is the National Director, excuse me, let me get this absolutely right, the National Director of Strategy and Partnerships at the Working Families Party. Thanks, Nalini. I appreciate it. And um, so again, much. I'm sorry for your loss, and I thank you for your work. Thank you so much, y'all. Take care.